Hi guys, it's Brooke with Super Tutor TV, and today I'm going to share with you three strategies for the ACT science section. Before we get going, I recommend that you all click on the subscribe button underneath this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The other thing that I'm gonna encourage you to do if you're taking the ACT, go to supertutortv.com and check out some of our ACT resources that we have. We have a mini free prep course for the ACT video series. You can also check out our paid video courses, which are basically like private tutoring for me, but way cheaper than private tutoring with me. So check out supertutortv.com. Like I said, we have some awesome material. Okay, so our three strategies for the ACT science section. The first one that I'm gonna talk about is the idea that you should use your pencil. As many of you know, if you've ever taken an ACT practice test, one of the biggest challenges of the science section is making sure that you keep track of all the little tiny details. When you read a question, every time you read a question, what I like to do is I underline every single piece of information that is detailed and that needs to be double checked according to figure two. Guess what that means? I have to double check that I go to the right figure. You don't know how many times I see students go to figure one instead of figure two, and then they get the whole question wrong. It's literally that silly this test. So be on the ball. Underline each little detail. Which of the following minerals, so I'm looking for minerals, would most typically be found only in rocks of a medium grade? You see how I can use my pencil? I underline everything important. Those are the details that I'm gonna go after and that's gonna help me get stuff right. Really easy, not that hard, but it is hard if you screw up the details. The later you get in the questions, the more these details matter. So that's my first tip. Use your pencil, keep track of all your details, double check each one, be super methodical and super careful, and you're gonna do much better on this test. Okay, tip number two, turn your paragraphs into symbols. So one of the things that I have trouble with on this test is running out of time. And one of the reasons I sometimes run out of time is this little section right here, which is like our dueling scientists, it's the section where you get paragraphs, right? Sometimes it's dueling scientists, sometimes it's student one and student two, sometimes it's scientists one, two, and three. It can be anything, but it's, it's this one sort of passage when you have paragraphs that man, it can really derail my time. Because what happens is I read this thing, it makes no sense to me, I don't remember any of it, and, and I read it to answer one question, and then I get to question nine, and then it's asking kind of about the same things, or maybe about the same person, and I totally forget everything I read when I was reading it for question seven. So, in order to cut back on that waste of time, what I try to do is when I read paragraphs, and I do this sometimes too, even with answer choices, or even with questions, I try to always turn paragraphish kind of information or sentence information into symbolic information. So I'm gonna step through this with you guys and you can kind of see what I mean. So I'm gonna do number eight first. So I'm looking for a hypothesis, if any, that asserts that monarch butterflies store lipids during two distinct phases. Monarch butterflies require energy from stored lipids for migration and during overwintering period. So I'm gonna say my butterfly requires energy and this is for migration and for my overwintering period. So I'm calling that OWP, okay? But you see how I just turned this sentence into this? I never have to read that sentence again. It's gonna save me time. Keep going. The butterflies first store lipids when they begin their migration. So I'm gonna put before, and then we have store lipids. That's one phase, right? One period. I need two periods. Then I have during. Lipids converted to energy, so I'm gonna go lip to energy. And the mass decreases, so the lipids go down. And then finally, after when they reach the overwintering sites, they end their migration and they must store lipids again. So in our overwintering period, we have store lipids again. So I'm gonna write store lipids. So you can see how I kind of map this out and I look, oh, I have two distinct periods right there. You see the two distinct period beforehand and in the overwintering and I'm all the way to the end of the paragraph so I know that there's not three periods, there's two periods. So I'm pretty sure it's hypothesis one. Wow, that's awesome. I don't wanna waste any time. I'm gonna keep moving. But as I keep moving, I know I already wrote some stuff down and that stuff's gonna help me on number nine. So which hypothesis of any asserts that monarch butterflies require energy from stored lipids neither for migration nor during the overwintering? Well, this one needs it for migration and overwintering. And I know that super quickly because I translated that as I read this because I didn't want to read it twice. You get what I'm saying? So I know hypothesis one is out. Now I can continue on to two. It says they require energy from stored lipids for migration, but not during overwintering. So now I could say this is H1. I could then, I'm going to turn this into a chart here make this H2, 
and they require it for migration, not during overwintering. So he's saying that, but he's saying not that. So you see how I've got this? This is not neither, neither. It's only one. And then I've got hypothesis three. And it says they require energy from stored lipids during the overwintering period, but not for migration. So then I have H3 during overwintering, but not migration. And it says neither nor none of them. Look at that. It's none of them. But you see how I've charted this out. Now, if I have to go back to that information again, I've got everything all right here. Isn't that awesome? I never have to read this first sentence again. I never have to read that one again. And I know kind of how far in I am. I put some lines in there. Boom, I'm gonna save time. So that's how that works. I turn my information into symbols, into charts, into figures, into little scratches that I can much more quickly interpret. Okay, finally, my last tip is the idea that questions should be a little bit easier toward the beginning or what I call right out the gate, like this question right here. And they should be a little bit harder when they're the last question, like right here. Here's what I mean by that. For question number 34, it's very likely that even if I don't understand what's going on, I can probably pull this right off a chart, okay? When we get to like number 40, I probably have to do at least two steps of thinking to get number 40 right. So if I look at this, it says based on figure one on August 3rd, what percent of incoming solar radiation was not reflected from plot two? So we've got a lot of details here. We've got plot two, I'm gonna go to figure one, plot two, August 3rd, let's try those. Figure one. August 3rd, that's right here. Plot two, oh, there it is. And here's my circle, and there's plot two, right? It's the square, square, and square. I can line those up. So I can very quickly find this thing, boop, 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 and I get 0.20, yay! But what is 0.20? 0.20 is albedo. And this is wherein the problem lies. This says incoming soldier radiation. The word I have is albedo. These are not the same words. You have to know the relationship between those. And if you don't know it so far, you've got to go look it up. And that's what I mean by this requires a little bit more attention to detail. How important are these the same thing? They might be, but they very well may not be. And then we also have this not, right? So I have to confirm the relationship between these two ideas before I can put an answer choice or I might be getting myself in trouble. So as you go, and the later you are, the more likely this is, pay attention to your details and know that you're probably going to have synthesis questions or questions that require you to double check relationships. It's not gonna be all straightforward. Once you get to these later ones, you're gonna have to do a little bit of math. You're gonna have to match up some ideas that, that are different the later you get. Earlier questions, you're probably not doing as much synthesis. If you can kind of guess this answer straight off the top of your head, you're probably right. And that's just a way to approach this so that you're not wasting tons of time trying to find this answer in the text when probably what your gut says is right. And so that when you do do something like number 40, you're being totally on your toes so you don't miss any of these little trip ups. Cool? Awesome. So that's it for today. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up if you want more science tips. We also have our number one secret science tip, which I didn't even go over here. So if you're curious about what our number one secret science tip is, go check out that video. We also have lots more awesome ACT videos here on Super Tutor TV, which you can check out on YouTube and check out our social media. I will see all of you guys next time on Super Tutor TV. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao.